Well, hello everyone and welcome, welcome to our December webinar. It's a wrap. Oh, we are so excited. Malia and I love hosting this webinar um, as we wrap up this year. Yes, please come in, tell us where you are chiming in from. And uh, we're very excited. This is an annual tradition at Office Dynamics. We have been doing this for quite some time. And what I'm going to do for you today is wrap up this year. We covered so many topics. As I was pulling my notes together for this webinar with you and started back in January thinking about all the webinars that we've done, the trainings that I've conducted, the special events we've hosted, like our admin month, our conference. There's just a wealth of information. The hard part was having to condense this into 45 minutes of information for you. So what I did is I pulled the very best, some of the tips that I want to revisit and reiterate. And that may be new to a lot of you who haven't heard them throughout the year. I also wanted to say that it's been a wonderful, wonderful year for us here at Office Dynamics. Um, we have had hundreds of administrative professionals trained through us this year, both virtually and in person. We have had uh, a great deal, I don't even know the numbers, I should have gotten the numbers of assistants who have earned their certifications this year from our Star Achievement Series, our World Class Assistant course, our Executive Support Series. So if that's you, please let us know in the comments that you received a designation from us this year and which designation you received. So we have several giveaways throughout this webinar. As you can see, there's some here. I have some to the left of me. Malia had fun shopping this year and she decided to go with the gingerbread theme. So that's our theme. And then we have, of course, my jumbo basket that is for the end of the webinar as a giveaway. So we're gonna have lots of fun. We're going to learn you know, as we go through the next 45 minutes. Also, today is the kickoff of our 12 deals of Christmas. How many of you know about our 12 deals that we do every year? That's also an annual tradition here. So every day, starting today after this webinar, you will receive an email telling you what the deal is that we're offering you for that particular day. So check your inbox every day, every morning, um, except today, because you're going to have that after the webinar. Brian has put together some amazing deals for you to help you end your year on a high note and possibly carry into the new year as well. So let me go through a few logistics with you. The learning portion of this webinar will be about 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. Of course, then we'll have a Q&A, so you can submit your questions anytime throughout the webinar as Malia will gather those. And, uh, and also during the Q&A time, you could submit your questions. So yes, happy holidays to everyone. Come on in and let's greet each other. We've got somebody from Germany joining us from Germany. Thank you for participating today. You also will receive a replay link. So in case you miss anything, if I'm moving too fast for you, because I do have a lot of information. So I'm going to try to keep this going. And in between, we are going to stop and we will do some giveaways. So we have pulled the names and or we'll be pulling throughout the event and Malia will announce those winners. Is everyone ready to go? So here we go all right i'm going to start out with the biggies of this year what were the big things that transpired here at office dynamics um so the first thing and how they impacted the administrative profession so our biggest uh change around here and news this year was the revamping of our star achievement series 
So the Star Achievement Series is our flagship training program. It's been around for 33 years and I have updated it 16 times. And now with this year's update, it makes it 17. But I was super excited about working on that series because I, I refreshed so many things within that program. We learned a lot through the years of the pandemic and as we came out on the other side of the pandemic, correct? And so those are the uh, lessons that I incorporated in to the second generation star achievement series. So that's what we're calling it, the second generation for a new generation and a new world. So as I was digging through all that content, I realized how many things have changed for us, had changed for us. So within that curriculum, I had to think about hybrid work environments. I had to think about there's people who are working in the office all the time and there are people who are fully remote. So as I was focusing in on a skill, um, let's say communications, one of the areas of course is huge. I had to think, how did that translate into the different worlds in which we operate now? So that was quite challenging actually. And to think about what was the difference when you're working remote versus if you were in person. And so while a lot of the tips and strategies stayed the same, there were some adaptations depending on if you were working remote. So um, some other things I wanted to tell you with the second generation, uh, some of the new topics. So if you wanna make a list of these, because these are the skills um, that you should be working on, or I'm gonna share some information with you that maybe you haven't heard of. So in case you're not aware of it, the Star Achievement Series focuses on four main component areas, attitude, skill, teamwork, and strategy. And there's workbooks for each of it. So within the attitude modules, I brought in something new. One of the things I brought in that was new was VUCA. Um, and that is the capital letters V-U-C-A. Leaders have known about VUCA for years and years and years, and I'll tell you what it is in a moment, but assistants really have not heard of it. And yet they're living in it. They just didn't know it. So what does it stand for? Get your pens ready, or if you're on, you know, I don't know where you're taking your notes, but the V is for volatility. The U is for uncertainty. C is complexity. And the A is for ambiguity. So we are living in a world of VUCA. Um, we especially were in it during 2020. Think about when the pandemic hit, right? We definitely were volatile. We were uncertain. We didn't know what the heck was going on. It was very, very complex. And there was a lot of ambiguity. So as we work through that in 2020, the end of 2020, into 2021, we started to get a little more stable. We started to have procedures in place and so forth. However, we still exist in a world of VUCA. It's just, you could have different degrees of it. So if you think about your organization right now, where they are, are they volatile? You know, depending on your industry um, or maybe with your competition, uh, is there uncertainty in your work environment at all? Is there complexity? Of course, there's always complexity, but sometimes it's more complex than others. Ambiguity is when we're getting information from different sources and it doesn't really line up in who do you believe and who do you trust. So the idea within, within this and what we teach in STAR is that you have to really build the skills to work in the world of VUCA which we're, we're always going to be in. There's always uncertainty. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So that's an important one. 
Another topic that I brought in to STAR was digital communications. Now, I want to be clear, not technology, because I don't teach technology. That's not my arena, okay? But this was about digital communications, about how we have all these tools now that we use, correct? And for our communications, and it is creating a lot of confusion and chaos and stress because we're communicating and we're receiving communications in so many different areas, right? If you're on Teams, people are on Slack, they're on San, uh, Sam, Asana, sorry. Um, then we have people texting us, we have people emailing us, um, instant messaging us. So write all this information and we're dealing with the digital world. So what we did is uh, as part of the workbook, um, and I just scanned a quick picture of it, printed a quick picture. We created a digital communication checklist. And so what I did is I'm just highlighted a few that I want to share with you that I think are really important. So first of all, the first category has to do with your environment. Two important things, whether you are working from home or in your office, select an appropriate background. Okay, we've been at this, this world, you know, living through our cameras for since 2020. So by now, people should know to select an appropriate background, but they don't. So why? Why is that important? Because if your background is distracting, people aren't looking at you. You know, if it's distracting where it's blurry or the lighting's bad, um, people can't focus on you. They're not listening to you because they're too distracted by things. So pay attention to that. And then another item on that checklist is turn off your email and text before joining your meeting. I know I try to do it. I don't always do it. I have to tell you, sometimes I just forget, but it should be on our checklist to double check that. Also on this checklist, I've got it as an attendee. So what I highlighted out of six ideas, look engaged. Don't multitask. So people could clearly tell when we're not paying attention on camera. I know I can. And I've taught, there's been so hundreds of assistants on virtual training this year from around the world. So I can easily tell when they're not looking at me, they're looking over here, they're on their phones. So remember, that's part of your brand. That's also part of you. So show, you know, like I said, that you, when you're on video and such, that you are engaged. Um, the next category I had on the checklist is when you are speaking in the virtual world, right? Our digital uh, checklist. I have three I highlighted for you. Speak at a good pace. Don't talk too fast. Remember to breathe, you know, in between, um, to pause for a moment. You might think it feels like forever, but it isn't. So just take that little pause. The next one, look at the camera. Yes, are you looking at the camera? I know it's weird, <laughs> but again, by now we should all be used to this. It's been three years, like I said. Um, so make that contact. It make, it helps people feel connected to you. They're going to be listening and be more engaged with you. And you build your confidence. I remember when I started speaking, it was so uncomfortable for me to look into a camera um, or, or when we were doing our first videos and filming. But if you do it enough, you get used to it and it doesn't feel strange. The last one under this, when you are speaking, try to be a little animated. Don't look like a lump on a log, as it says in our book, boring. <laughs> 
So not that you have to be like me. I'm kind of over the top, right? It's just who I am. But have a little animation. Um, also, your uh, it looks like everybody is interested in the 12 deals of Christmas. <laughs> okay, pay attention right now. Be engaged with me. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, think about your fluctuation, you know, of the tone of your voice and so forth. All right, we, that was only two ideas so far for the year. I have four pages almost. All right, so here we go. The next one within new topics when we were updating the STAR series. We have a piece on why turning on our camera is important. Um, I have a whole page on it, and it's not something I wrote. I did a lot of research. And so... It just supported what I believe, but what it says, I've got some points for you. We quickly judge others on what we see or we don't see. So when you don't turn on your video, you leave the interpretation up to others who may incorrectly assume the words of you. If we're not on camera, it's like, well, what is that person doing? Well, they did they even get dressed today? Um, are they paying any attention? Are they, you know, they're really in the other room, you know, that type of thing. So they can assume the worst. Now, what I notice and what I like when I'm teaching a class, uh, if somebody has to go off camera, they will tell me in the chat, well, it's lunchtime right now where I am and I'm eating my lunch. So therefore I'm turning my camera off or I need to step away for a moment. You know, my manager needs something quickly. So if you do have to go af off camera or if your camera's not working, then let people know. Another reason why is when you don't use video, you are a blank space or an avatar. You lose the ability to control the presentation of you which is part of your brand. And I do want to say something about avatars because I worked, I worked with a client this year. Uh, I was the an HR director even. And they hired me to do training, right? And talk about digital etiquette and digital communications to their assistants. And so I know this person had the ability to be on camera because of our Zoom meetings. But then there were so many times she would have an avatar, her avatar up. And I have to tell you, it just, you know, have your real picture, okay? Don't, not these avatars of ourselves, be human. We connect with humans on a much different level than an avatar, even though that's the trend, okay? Um, the other reason to be on camera, have your video on is you become more memorable. Your image melds with your words. Okay, so think about it. Think about like right now, if I wasn't on camera at all, and you were just listening, it would be okay. But you can't really see where I'm putting emphasis. You can't see my passion, right, for what I'm doing. So um, that was another topic. All right, here's an aha for you. I doubt you've heard of this. But the focus now is on energy management, not time management. So yet everybody talks about time management. Uh, everybody still says, I don't have enough time. Assistants are always saying, how do I prioritize? Clients hire me to talk about juggling priorities and managing time and managing projects. So again, you know, I do my research. I stay abreast of the trends that are happening in training and development and where they're heading. And so the emphasis now is on energy management, which makes a lot of sense, meaning your physical energy and your mental energy. If you have both of those, you are on fire and you are going to get so much done. So switch your thinking, start focusing on mental energy. How do you get mental energy? Now, I'm not going to go through all of that. I have talked about it in courses, but 
you're going to have to think about that. What, what can you do to get mentally psyched? Um, and it's really getting yourself in a state of mind because there's sometimes maybe before I have to present like tomorrow night, I'm doing, um, a program for assistance in Dubai at nine o'clock my time. I'm going to have to get in that mental energy psyched mode because usually that's when I'm starting to wind down. So it's really a mental thing that I do with myself and get myself psyched up and create that energy within my thinking versus, oh, I'm tired. It's the end of the day. It's like, all right, let's go. Let's fire up. I'm excited about this. The physical part, what do you eat throughout the day? Seriously. You know, I mean, we joke about it, but the truth is, and, and we get our treats around here, like right now it's the holiday and we've got all kinds of goodies. But I notice when I eat those goodies, I, you know, I kind of slump a little bit versus when I've had something really nutritious. Are you drinking your water? So again, your sleep, that all plays into it. So if you combine those two, you're going to get more work done. You're going to be more creative. You're going to solve problems faster. You're going to have a better attitude. It, it's all connected, folks, all of it. The other thing I want to mention within this that we talk about in our um, training on that topic is decision fatigue and information fatigue. I think that's those two are very, very important. Information fatigue, definitely. We take in information all day from multiple sources. So if you feel really tired at three o'clock or so, yeah. So block, don't take in a lot more information. You know, we're overloaded. So you have to control how much information you digest in a day. Decision fatigue, there's two areas for this. One is your executives are decision fatigued okay all day long they have to make decisions some smaller some are monumental so the more decisions you can make and take off their plate the more valuable you will become you also have to look at decision fatigue for yourself if toward the end of a particular day you're a little tired don't make big decisions then leave it for the next day put it on the back burner even if it's an email that you want to respond to, decide, ah, I'm not going to respond right now because I'm going to be so quick and fast and it's not going to come across like I want it to. All right. All right. Is everyone still with me? Are you good? Okay. The next piece, and we're, I'm still in the Star Achievement course, some of the add-ons that we did this year that are important for you. I talk, I've talked about this for years, but I finally brought it into the, the course. Um, inform, admins as information flow managers. Think about that. Seeing yourself as a flow manager. Now, the short version, what I mean by that is the informa information that your manager, your leaders get or know or are aware of they should flow through to you and then you flow, it flows through you and you decide whether to work on it yourself, whether to delegate it, put it in follow up, um, put it in your, your to do sheets, however you keep track of that. The, the challenge you have today is your managers and leaders are doing a lot on their own. They're independent, they're tech savvy and they're not including you on what's going on. And therefore you can't be as proactive. You can't you know, take that initiative so much. So um, that's something to think about, seeing yourself as an information flow manager. And there's also a lot of information that flows through you that your executives don't even know about, but that you're privy to. All right, I'm going to keep going because, goodness, we haven't even gotten to our first uh, set of giveaways. I better keep moving. Okay, um, some other things for you to keep in mind uh, that we built into STAR. Also, I, I talk about understanding an executive's world because if, if you really understand what their world is like, you're going to be able to better support them. You're going to understand 
um, more of what what their world encompasses. It's not just what you see on the surface. So a couple quick things I want to share with you. Executives often hide their stress or anxiety from their team. They're really good at that. They know how to do that. Why should you care? Because you should. You should know if they're in a stressful state because you're, you're keeping track of their calendar and everything else. And you're having to keep them um, on track with their meetings and so forth. Uh, it leads to emotional intelligence when you understand that. Uh, something else very important, executives are used to jumping into new situations and may not need a lot of explanation or conversation. So that's important to know. Sometimes maybe you want to provide more of the story than your executive needs. That's a big aha. I had a two day coaching assignment this year in California where I worked with the president and his executive assistant. Um, and one of the things we focused on was the assistant not taking so much of the executive's time by giving this whole backstory that the executive could care less about. So as you move forward, think about how much information you are giving to your executive and is it necessary? They're time compressed. A few other topics, um, brand. We talk about professional brand a lot this year. So not only in the Star Achievement Series course, but this one particular client that I was telling you that hired us, um, brand was very, very important. And so the observations that are, are being made by executives, HR professionals, training and development, um, managers, as they feel their employees have not paid attention to their brand much, as much as they should. That over the last few years, people have gotten so casual in their dress, in their attitude, in their behaviors, in their communications, they've lost their polish. And that's why we're getting back in the training game big time this year. So it's time to polish up our game. It's time to really look at our brand in every facet, how we write, what we say, what we do, how we project ourselves on camera, off camera, in person. How are we dressed for the day? You know, did you comb your hair? Or does it look like you just rolled out of bed? Every facet is being observed today. So, Think about as you go into next year, what do you want your brand to communicate? You intentionally create a brand. I mean, I'll tell you more about that because uh, we had a great speaker at our conference who focused in on that. Um, all right, let's move on. The next biggie this year was in April for Administrative Professionals Week. Um, I loved what we did this year. How many of you were any of you involved in our April events? We had eight days of events and they were around the theme of you are awesome. And it was so much fun. I, I just loved it. So we did eight days of events. Two of the days we had webinars, which I'm going to share with you a little bit of the information from the webinars in a moment. But we also had contests. We had something called Magic Moments, um, asking assistants to share what were the magic moments they experienced so far in the year. And so we learned a lot through what they posted as to the little things that were magic moments. You know, sometimes in our workplaces, we just forget. We instead think about what's frustrating us um, or who we're not getting along with. And we forget that there are these magic moments. We also had a gratitude photo contest. We did a gratitude circle, I think on Zoom. Um, we had a scavenger hunt, a virtual scavenger hunt. So what did we learn from all of that? Well, one, I learned that assistants really appreciated being recognized in different ways and engaging in activities and events. You know, years ago, we did 
blogs. You know, that was the big thing, a blogathon. Well, now over the years, everybody does a blogathon for assistance. Um, there's a lot of the typical, typical. And so we wanted to think outside the box for you. So we learned that's what assistance wanted. We also learned that against assistance are amazing. They really are because they were sharing our their success stories. So I hope in 2024, you'll join in because I know you have successes and I want to hear about them. Our, as far as our webinars, the um, we kicked off the April events with um, Sunny Noonan. She's the CEO of the Admin Awards. Do any of you know Sunny? Please let me know. She's amazing. And so her whole piece for that webinar, we talked about self-advocacy, how assistants are really very shy at, at talking about their accomplishments. And so, of course, Sunny being in the awards world, you know, she knows a lot about this. And um, she's such a huge fan, you know, and that the idea is that there are these great ideas you have throughout the year. You have these amazing comp accomplishments. Are you advocating that? Are you letting people know? And again, it's not about ego or bragging, but making people aware of some of the things you do that are behind the scenes that they're not aware of. So that was really important. Kayla Hutchins, I don't know if she's on today. She usually is, is an amazing admin who lives here in Las Vegas. We've known Kayla for years. She did a webinar for us teaching assistants how to get support for their professional development. And she knows it firsthand. Kayla not only has gotten support for her professional development, and that's pretty easy because her executive believes in it. However, what she did is went to senior leadership of the company and got them to approve sending, I think, seven assistants or eight assistants to our annual conference. And, and that could have been very intimidating, but she did it all herself. She put the present presentation together. She advocated for herself. So that the learning lesson for you is, are you really advocating? Are you a champion for getting support for your professional development? That's really something you need to do on your own, especially if your company isn't doing anything for you. Um, all right, let's go on. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've got so much to do yet before we do giveaways, Malia. Okay, I'll keep moving fast. Our 30th annual conference was huge, huge, huge. And it was amazing. That's all I could say. It was perfect every single day. And I'm going to share with you some of the tips. But first of all, I just want to tell you in my opening speech, my opening session, it wasn't a speech, actually. It was a role play with my sister, who was a director in Hollywood for many years um, and cinematographer. And so I talked about how your role to me is like a movie. You know, it's your work life. It's filled with intricate themes and characters and plots and symbols. Some days you're the air traffic controller, right? Some day you're a rule enforcer. You are the director and you are also the actor. And so we dug deep into that whole topic. Your role's always been that way, but there have been so many changes in the last few years that we've got to think differently about the character you play in the future. So in my conference opening, I came up with 20 innovative roles assistants can play right from where they sit. I'm not going to do all 20. I'm going to give you a few of these ideas. Make notes because these are areas you can grow into that you 
to, that will make your job more interesting, that will make you more valuable to your manager and to your organization. So I've got, how many ideas? Five. Here they are in short form. Digital gatekeeper, knowledge curator. Think about it. Content creator. You can develop, edit, and post content. Maybe on social media, blogs, internal communications. Yes, be a content creator. Imagine that on your resume instead of just, oh, I plan meetings and I book travel. Oh, no, I'm a knowledge curator. I'm a content creator. I'm an event innovator. So, but you really have to do it. So within the event innovation, it's not just planning them. Maybe it's introducing virtual reality. It's augmented reality or interactive elements to make your meetings exciting. And the last one, learning and development advocate, to be an advocate. All right, some of the lessons we learned from our speakers, and we have amazing speakers that if you want to hear it, go get conference on demand. But William Aruda, who I absolutely love and rave about, he said relationships are the currency of business. Relationships are the currency of business. So what kinds of relationships are you building in the workplace? Are you building relationships or are you staying in your own little corner? He said he talks a lot about our signature strengths. So those are your natural, uh, the natural things that you're really good at. But what I love that he talks about is he talks about our differentiators. What's your dim differentiator? What is it that you offer that no one else can offer? And then stay with me. We're going to get to three giveaways very quickly. Starla West, she is amazing. She talked about emotional intelligence, which we teach, but Starla brought up some concepts that I haven't heard and were very interesting. She talked about emotional clarity and emotional triggers. So clarity is a specific kind of awareness that considers cause and effect. It's an enhanced ability to identify and understand the events that yield different emotions or outcomes. That's pretty heavy. I don't know. You may have to go back and listen to that one. Trigger. We know this. We know this. Trigger is a response to a person, situation, event, conversation, email, or other entity that provokes an emotional response powerful enough to override rational and objective thinking. Who or what are your triggers? We all have them. And then last from our conference, it's not the last person, but who I wanted to, to quote was Netta Lena Nasserdeen. She said, the greatest tragedy today is wasted human potential. Are you living up to your full potential? And you might say, you're probably saying, yes, sure I do. But, but we don't know what we're capable of until we reach farther, till we reach for the stars, till we push ourselves out of our comfort zones. So I'm here to say, you haven't re reached your full potential. I know there's so much more within you. She also told us to step into our leadership power. I love that one. So look for ways, I mean, you are leaders. You can lead teams, you can lead projects, you can lead your um, executive, lead ideas, lead changing processes, step into that power. All right, Malia, oh my gosh, we still have more to go, but we've got to do our giveaways, right? Let's go really, really quick. Uh, so um, our three giveaways. Uh, I'll just start here with what's close to me. So again, Malia picked 
all these wonderful things out, right? We've got these adorable mugs, right, Malia? Yeah, cocoa mugs. Got cocoa mugs and, of course, this to go with it. Yay. So, who is our lucky winner on that? Our lucky winner on the cups is Christine Shannon. Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, sorry, I was laughing. Somebody said I missed my sweatpants. You can go <laughs> after work, folks. You don't have to totally give them up. Okay, <laughs> our next set, Malia picked out these very cute. Can you see these? I hope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Here is our lucky winner. Okay. That one, those two little guy or the little guy and gal is going to Trisha. Trisha Wiggins. Oh, Trisha! Woohoo! Congratulations <laughs> and happy holidays. All right, we got one more. Um, oh, this is so cute. She's got this. <laughs> it's oh, my favorite song. <laughs> and then this board is the TikTok board. Take half <laughs> I don't know why Joe can't remember oh, that <laughs> That you can put on TikTok after you play it. <laughs> okay, who's our winner? Winner on that one is Paula Sandritter. Oh, <laughs> my friend in Orlando. Oh, Paula. That's so exciting. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, we're going to have another set of three and then the jumbos at the end. Uh, so hopefully you can stay with me. All right, I'm going to keep moving because I know we have to get to questions as well. Yes, congratulations to everyone. Uh, the next thing I pulled, I went through some of our webinars and just pulled some information, not from all of them, but some of the key ones I wanted to share with you. So in January, our webinar was the 19 must-have competencies for administrative excellence. Now, competencies, just to give you the short version, uh, are really our skills, attitudes, behaviors. And the competencies that we have set up, the 19, we've actually had over the years, there were, first we started with 12 competencies for administrative professionals main areas, main competencies. Of course, there's many more. Then that evolved to the number 15. Now there are 19 areas. So that shows that, you know, the breadth of your job has grown, but also the necessity for developing broader skills has grown. So there's still very important um those competency areas and they cover and range from attitude management to our typical but also digital skills is of course another set of our competencies and leadership and so forth so when we have competencies uh what we set up they're called superior performer differentiators meaning star performing assistants have this level of how they perform within all the competencies. So I don't want to overwhelm you. All I could tell you is everything we teach falls within one of those 19 areas. Okay. Um, April, I already told you about Sunny Noonan and how she talked about the importance of self advocacy. But what I liked is uh, I pulled this quote. Sunny said, leaders respect people who are like them, who are bold, who are not afraid to take risks. And leaders are used to self-advocacy, meaning it's not weird to them if you talk or promote yourself and what you can do, what you're capable of doing or what you have done. They're used to that. And it's true. They do respect people who think like that. In June, we had our Enlighten event. Did any of you in, attend our Enlighten? That's our virtual 
mid-year two-day event. And my topic was working in tandem with AI. So of course, AI has been huge this year, right? We all know it's everywhere in chat GPT. It is my friend. I have to tell you, I love it. When I am stuck and I need that creative kick, I love to go to chat. So now I know some of you are not allowed to use it. It's not permitted within your company. That's okay. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't use it outside of work to stimulate your thinking. You should check it out. Um, the other thing, AI in general, you know, just AI, we have to work in tandem with it. So I really delved into the world of AI this year, not only for Enlightened, but then as the months passed, the idea is AI can do a lot of what you do. It can, and it can do it really good. I've been putting it to the test. So the thing is you have to let people see where the human element is necessary and needed. It's not designed to replace you. It's designed to make your jobs easier make our jobs everyone even in marketing departments sales everything the idea is though if we don't show where the human element comes into play it can replace you so that that's the message i want you to remember within ai don't be afraid of it it's fabulous but also know that the human element is still very very necessary and important um, in the August webinar, I know it's, oh gosh, quarter of already, I covered five keys to powerful communication with your leader. So the five keys were initiate conversation. Don't wait for them to talk to you uh, or to check in with you. Initiate it. Give them status updates. Ask them questions. Ask for more context if you need it. Number two, get better information from your leaders. It's not always about getting more information. We could get tons of information and it could be worthless. So it's developing that skill of knowing what questions to ask. The third was to select the right tool, meaning knowing when you need to pick up the phone, knowing when you need to walk in their office, Instant messaging and texting is not always the best tool. The fourth is to clarify expectations. We always talk about that. And number five was learn executive speak, meaning listening to the words they use. They have their own language and mirroring that because when you mirror it, they view you as that strategic partner. All right, I'm gonna keep rolling. Oh my goodness, okay. Woo. Um, the, the last thing I'm going to share, because I don't think I'm going to make it through every little single thing. I'm getting very close, though. In September, our webinar was about changing your thinking from check the task off thinker to being a results driven mindset. So that also was another uh, big area that we amplified this year is you've got to think about the results you're trying to achieve. Then you back into the tasks that you need to do to create that result. Now, that's a very different way for assistants to think. It's a big switch. But that's what the people, the people who you support, that's how they think. So you need to think about what's the result I want to achieve. And then how do I get there? And then that builds into your task list. Uh, so what else? All right, I've got to stop here. Um, we're going to do three more giveaways. Okay, so let's do that. Um, gosh, Malia's got these. A little, like a little family. <laughs> All right, anyway, a little broken family. <laughs> all this stuff, Malia. I know. I get bigger things for me. <laughs> all right, so who's the lucky winner on that? 
we are giving that one is going to Rhonda Love All. I love that name. Rhonda Love All. Yay! All right, everybody. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Time is going so fast. I feel like I'm I'm like speaking on speed or something. <laughs> I couldn't even get all through all my stuff. <laughs> I said we covered a lot of territory this year. Okay, who are these fun? Oh, we love those. Okay, those are going to. They're so cute. Irma Ag Aguilar Aguilar. Okay. Irma Aguilar. Very good. Very good. <laughs> All right. Now I can hold this one easily. <laughs> She's so cute. Stop. <laughs> All righty. Sorry. Patricia Sicone. Oh, Patricia. Oh, okay. oh, uh, I, I, no. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. All right. We've got to go to Q&A, um, and then I've got a, a couple, well, I need to make one announcement because it's really, really important, and if any of you have to step away, I'm real, I want you to know about this. Remember I said, I don't teach tech. I don't, that is not me. But we are so excited to announce that we are gonna offer tech classes next year. We have partnered with Mike Song, who is the founder and CEO of Get Control. I've known Mike for years. He's amazing. He's informative. He's fun. He knows his stuff. And so it's a new series of courses. It's called Digital Efficiency for Administrative Excellence. And there are six different classes. You buy it as a bundle, a series. Um, and there is a seventh offering if you want to do an add-on. But look, again, check the 12 deals of Christmas because I imagine something will be in there. All right, let's do a few questions, Malia. Okay. And then, then we'll get to this huge thing that I'm not even going to try to lift. <laughs> but it is it's filled to the brim with stuff. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> We love this seminar. <laughs> we wait all eleven months for. This. I know, right? Okay. Wait, I have to get my my water. <laughs> okay, Karen would like to know what are some concrete examples of how to focus on mental energy. I saw music mentioned. Is there anything else? That's a good concrete example to get mental energy. What helps me is when I read, I read something that is very motivational, inspirational, or just, it, it's just, it's exciting. So I, I do a lot of that. I keep little affirmations around. I keep um, little quote cards around. I have books that I'll read. Mental, here's the other secret. I get very quiet with myself. I, I sit there quietly. It's like five minutes of just shutting my brain off from everything and telling myself that I am energized. I am enthusiastic. I've got this, you know, whatever it is, um, that there, there is nothing too big that you can't uh, deal with throughout your work day. So quiet is good. Sometimes we don't, you know, we don't make that quiet time. Um, mental energy, wow, what do I do? Um, also sometimes physical activity is good for mental. So I notice when I force myself to go to the gym, even though I don't wanna go and I'm dead tired, but once I'm there and after I've been there for like within 20 minutes, I start getting this mental burst of energy and that pushes the physical. And then I go home, you know, at six o'clock and I, I'll be doing things at night where on the other nights I don't feel like it. So that really kicks in everything and gets you going. Okay, what else? Thank you. Uh, Sandy wants to know if you can give some suggestions on how to encourage your boss 
to share things that you feel are important for you. Share things that he feels are important for you to know. Sorry. No, <laughs> that's okay. help your mentality. It's uh, the the main thing um, that you need to do within that is help them understand why you need to know that. Because a lot of times they don't even think about it, right? They're not thinking about telling you or involving you. But if you say and let them know that um, here's how I would like to be involved, here is information, you know, that I, I need or I would like to have because and help them see how it helps you do your job better. So focus on the benefit, like think to yourself by knowing this, what does it really do for me so that you could talk about the benefits of it. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, um, Carmen says the multi-generational offices pose a big challenge. Do you have any tips on navigating this minefield? Oh boy, yes, we had them all at conference. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had three days of tips on how to do that. But, um, you know, I'm thinking about within my opening, um, we talked about being respectful of others, being understanding of others. You know, I brought up gender identified at conference, how we have to be very aware and now people will let us know the gender they want to be referenced as. So that was another big aha that, you know, was an eye opener. And so within that, you know, we need to really understand and be accepting of others versus being critical and judging others. People get to choose who they want to be and they should be able to live that out. Um, without judgment, have empathy is very important. Have empathy. It's to encourage dialogue. Uh, and I know this is something to we teach in star that I love when you're in conflict to just listen, because what we tend to do is think about how we're right, how our idea is better. Uh, we've got to win and they have to lose and we nothing happens then. But I know that's the number one tip I learned years ago is to listen. So just listen to others as they express their ideas, their opinions, their views. Doesn't mean you have to agree with them. But when you listen, you come from a, an entirely different place. And then you'll know how to communicate with those individuals. And then the next tip I have is um, Google uh, or chat about the generations. I think now we're up to seven, six generations in the workplace, might be seven now, because um, everybody's not retiring. And it will tell you how to communicate with each generation. And so learn specific strategies and tips how to communicate with the different generations. So, um, all right, I wanna do, let's see, a couple of quick things and we have the announcement. I will stay on five minutes extra if anyone wants to stay on and we could address a few more questions. Um, but as I mentioned, some quick announcements, the 12 deals starts today. So when you're done with this webinar, you should already have something in your inbox to kick off the um, 12 deals and check your inbox every day. Uh, today's deal, oh, here it is. It's a newly designed downloadable ebook or ebooks, I should say, $5. I hope I said that right, Brian, right? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know. So, yes, we did update our um, ebooks, downloadable ebooks. Our, let's see, what else? Our office is closed in case you need us. We are closed December 21 to January 2nd. So we're going to take a nice break and relax and get refreshed so that we can kick off 2024 with a bang because we have a lot of exciting things for you. By the way, we have our entire year of courses mapped out. Woohoo! We usually don't do that. We are usually book three, four, five months out, but we have all our star classes on our website, our world class assistant classes. 
uh, the dates, our enlightened dates, our conference dates. It's all out there. So, um, all right, let's do the giveaway. Jones, Jolly, Jingle, Jumbo, Bask. <laughs> Oh, it's filled with, oh my gosh, a wonderful blanket and a beautiful, like, I don't dare unpack it, right? Beautiful mug, bells, candles, socks, lots of socks, because I love socks. So these are a lot of my favorite things that I picked out um, for you, whoever is the, the lucky person out there. So Malia, without further ado, who is the winner of that? Hey, let's get a drum roll. It is Valerie. <laughs> Valerie. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to Valerie. To <laughs> Zygon Richardson. Woo! Congratulations. Woohoo! Congratulations. Yay. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to stay on five more minutes. Um, if you have to go, well, first of all, thank you so, 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 so much for your support this year. I hope you have enjoyed learning with us um, and having fun with us because that's important too. We're so grateful for you because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. You're, you're who we live for. So have a wonderful holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year. Um, and anyway, I'm staying on five minutes. So if you want to hang with me, please do. And I'll take a few more questions. But we'll look forward to seeing you in 2024. All right, Malia, what else? Do we have a few more questions? Yes, they just keep popping in. Sorry. No, that's um, right. <laughs> OK, let's see. Um, where can Kelly find the 19 competencies that admins need? Oh, let's see. I believe, I want to say that they're on our website. Um, I don't mind quickly running through them, but I believe we actually have the assessment on the Office Dynamics website. Let me pull this out of my webinar notes. Um, this is what it looks like. And so within each main competency, there are actions that star performing assistants take. We use this a lot in training and coaching, but I'll, I'll run through really quick some of the areas. Uh, they cover appointment management, attitude management, business acumen, career management, communications, leadership. I think maybe we're going to have to um, somehow include this. I know I always get asked. People want everything I talk about and, and share. But check out our website. Type in Star Performing Administrative Competencies. The, the search bar is on the bottom of the page. So scroll all the way down and you'll find the search bar. Yeah, I think we I'm pretty sure we have them there. You just have to search for it. Okay. okay. All righty. Um, let's see. If you initiate the meeting, but then can't, but then they cancel it or change it because something else came up, you should reschedule it. They cancel it and goes in a complete circle. How do you express this as a concern? Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking my approach would be, uh, state the facts first of all that's that's how i start or i would start with something so we had you know this meeting was scheduled for this date january let's say january 12th and you notified me of a cancellation you know on this particular date and so we reset it for this date i received another notification that it, the meeting had to be canceled so First deal with facts because people can't argue with facts. And then what then I would focus on, you know, the importance of that meeting and why it's necessary that this meeting take place. And then also establish a date by when this meeting does need to make, take place. 
Um, so I would try that in a, that's a more assertive type of approach, but you're doing it in a nice way. And then if you still continue to have issues, I probably would say, is there a problem, you know, that is, you know, something going on that I'm not aware of that continues uh, to be a detriment to our having this meeting. So you have to play with your words and word it appropriately, but that's the essence of what I would say. All right, let's take one more. We still have 534 people on here. Okay, um, let's see. How do I go about showing my CEO that he needs me and needs to include me? You mentioned asking questions to be more involved. What questions can I ask? Oh my gosh. Um, that's a long answer, believe it or not. Um, so I don't know if, do we have the contact information of this person who's asking? I can, I can get it. Yeah, because that, that is lengthy. Okay. Several different, um, but a good question always to ask is, could you give me more context around that? So if they're telling you to set up a meeting or they have a special trip, it's asking for more context around that particular thing that they're asking. Maybe it's a special project. Can you provide me with more context? Meaning okay. give me more pieces of the puzzle. But that's a very good question that I could think of right off the top of my head. Okay. So... Um, really quick, too, I just want to know, does anyone have any questions regarding 2024 classes that are coming up? Um, some people aren't even aware of everything we offer. We also have on-site training, you know, that's kicked in again. So do you have any questions in regard to that that I could answer before we sign off? I don't see you're good well good that's okay yeah. because you could always call malia she's always happy to talk to you um you can fill out our contact us form also don't forget we have monday motivators for you i have a lot of great topics planned for next year's webinars so please come back please join us okay and thank you again everyone so much um, and wish you very happy holidays. I lost my belt. It's a wrap. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone.